Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to go over this new kit, kind of new, came out with the, at the same time our catalog was released in May. It's called the Notes of Cheer Card Kit. And what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to create the projects from the Notes of Cheer Card Kit. And for this project, instead of creating a card, we're going to create a 3D box out of the card. Okay, so we're going to just use the contents of the kit. I did use, I did use Pal Papaya here, some other card stuck, but we're just going to use the contents that come in the kit to make that box. I'm going to show you how. I'm going to make this card very easy. I'm going to make, let's see, this card, just finish making this card because I already have part of the card put together. That's from somewhere else. I was just using that for my photo. Let me grab my dimensionals. And we will get started. And I want to show you the contents of the kit. So that's what I want to start out by doing. And I have opened the kit, so I'll explain what was there first. I want to tell you about our kit's collection. This is the second video I've done on the kit's collection by Stampin' Up. This kit, in particular, is a great price point because it's only $12 and you can make nine cards. It involves no stamping whatsoever. So in our kit's collection, I just want to go over the, the $9 or the $12 kits first. Like I'll just go, I'm going to go backwards through the, through the kit's collection, just real quick. We have a kerchief card kit, precious partial card kit. One of my team members made that during our kit night the other day. It was really cool, very easy, no stamping. And then here, we're doing this one, Notes of Cheer card kit. These are the product numbers, but you can actually just go ahead on my website and look up kit's collection. I mean, actually go to the link in, my, in the description of this video. Now I'm going to go backwards here. There's For the Guys kit. Now when you see these kits that are $19, that, what's the, the difference between these and these is these involve stamping and these are all inclusive. So For the Guys, No Matter the Weather, Petal Notes, Sentimental Rose, Let's Party Treat Packaging, A Little Smile, and You Are My Anchor, which I showed before on this channel. Maybe I'll kind of give you a little sneak peek of these at the end just because my table's crowded. Um, these means that like they're all inclusive they come with a stamping block and a stamp set so I'll, I'll try to show you what that means later but this one doesn't come with a stamping block and stamp set but I mean what do you want for 12 bucks right all right so I just keep it real you know me all right so this is the the instructions so you get this comes with the all kits I haven't even opened these yet believe it or not I made the first two cards or the first three projects without even looking at the inside of this but there are the instructions. For those of you that like instructions, they're now colorful, beautiful instructions. We've also made that improvement to paper pumpkin kits with the beautiful instructions. I just do my own thing, but I also just look at the pictures. I think you don't even need instructions if you just look at the pictures. But what I always like to do, I do keep this shut and turn it over right away, and I always like to look at the coordinating colors. Now, I'm thinking that they missed one from here because, look, it says Evening Evergreen, Pale Papaya, and Polished Pink. I'm thinking they missed Misty Moonlight because that is clearly Misty Moonlight. Here, I'm gonna take out the stamping pad so you believe me, right? I don't know why that's not listed because that to me is a coordinating color. Anyway, so maybe, maybe they just mean the coordinating colors of, I don't know what they mean, I don't know what they would mean. Polished pink, pale papaya. See, there's the evening evergreen and they're also kind of missing this one here. This looks like, that light one looks like it could be, I don't know, the the pear pizzazz? Possibly. Okay. N mean, that's neither here nor there. So then it says a little note to cheer. This is a finished card. So I already, I already opened this kit. So what's really cool about this kit is it's in every language. Not every language. Every language that we have markets in. So this means, so you, you, can, you can get these sentiments and then you have, so they sell the same kit in Germany, France, the Netherlands, right? So we have like different so all we need is this one though. We need a little note of cheer. So we're gonna pop this out, pop one of these out. Now what I like to do when I pop this out is just kinda cut off these little nibs because those kind of annoy me. Those little things that, they're just from the factory. I mean, they're just, that's how they make these quick, quickly is by making sheets of them. You can file those off with a nail file. It doesn't really look bad or anything. It just, I like to get those off. Okay, so there we are. And then you make life brighter. We're gonna need that for our box. So we're going to pop that out right now. As I'm showing you things, I'm just taking out what we need for today's projects here. So let's see. This. I almost put this in my Ink It Up series, 
And I was like, wait, I can't put it in my Ink It Up series because there's no ink. <laughs> there's no stamping involved. I'm like, okay, so I can't put it in that series. And then I was like, okay, I'll put it in my Butterfly series because there's butterflies. I was like, I can't put it in my Butterfly Boot Camp series because I didn't tell my, my Butterfly, butterfly Boot Camp Brilliance Boot Camp participants to get this kit. And I didn't even know about the kit when I planned that Butterfly Boot Camp series. Or I would have put, I would have actually included this whole thing. I would have included one of each of these in the Butterfly Brilliance Boot Camp had I thought of it earlier. So then I can't include it in that series. So I just made it its own video. I think I'll just do a little kit series. I'm here for you today and always. These are some other sentiments that come. Now I would have used personally more contrast. I would not have put white on pale papaya. That's hard to read and that's my opinion, but it is not the main sentiment. See here, when you put it on something, it's a little easier to read, but I, I, it, goes, it goes like under this. So it's actually easier to read when you put it next to that. Okay, there's some sentiments, and what else do we have? These are other languages. Here, you're on my mind. Pop that out. For this one, you need to pop out the little circles as well. So there's lots of extras in other languages. Now, if you don't want to give them to someone in another country, like you might not have a pen pal in another country where you're like, oh, here's some extra sentiments. So instead, what you can do with these extra sentiments, which is pretty cool with this kit, is just flip them over. I'm always looking for things to stamp onto. I'm just poking these out with my snips. You could use the take your pick tool to poke these out. So you could flip these over and use them. See, just stamp on them. So that's good, right? You have extra sentiments. Okay, so that's one thing in the kit. Putting that off to the side. We've done this one. We've taken off all three sentiments. To put that off to the side. That's all there is for sentiments. I mean, the reason there's so many is there, right? Other languages. Okay, now you get three of these kind of cards, right? This is, this is in three rainbow cards, which I really like. And I kind of hate covering up the rainbow with the, with the uh, die cut, but we'll use this white card for the, making our box. So you get three of these white cards. And here's what I did with the one. We'll just make this one. We're going to finish this one real quick. And I, I glued this on. So that's all I've done. I'm going to show you what I mean. So you get three white cards, and then you get these beautiful doilies to glue onto your white cards. I wanted the glue to dry before the video, so I glued it on ahead of time. Here are the beautiful white doilies. Doily frames. I mean, those are just gorgeous. So, of course, you're going to use your fine tip glue, which we call the... This, this is seen better days. Tombow glue, multi-purpose glue. It has a, it, you could use your fine tip glue or just Tombow glue. Poke, drop a few dots on it, you lay it down, and then the blobs start coming out, sort of oozing in. So then you kind of pat that off, pat off your extra glue, let it dry. Okay, we're gonna put that off to the side. That's our doily. And let me, let me show you the rest of the supplies. This is just such a fun box of crafty goodness. You're gonna love it. You get some bling. A lot of bling, you need bling on every card. You get these beautiful die cuts. So of course this inspired, my friend Sandra did a video where she was saying that this inspired her to make, so this card here, which you make with this overlay, inspired her to do the same thing with Butterfly Brilliance. So we could do that maybe in the boot camp where you cut out the, the Brilliant Wings dies, right? You cut out those dies and then you replace them in the holes where you cut them out and sort of make the same kind of card using some other cool background designer series paper. So one kit, so this kit doesn't, isn't just amazingly awesome, it should inspire you to do other crafts. So you get three of those, okay, and then you get two of these, and I, I, I couldn't bear to just fold it and be like, that's it, right? Paper Chef can't do that sometimes. I just can't go like this and slap a, slap a sentiment on it. It's cute, and I love it, but I'm like, I gotta make this into a box, and I'll show you what sort of inspired me for that. All right, so, We'll get to that in a minute. So you get three of those beautiful butterfly cards. Now look at these cool envelopes. Look at these amazing envelopes with the scalloped edges, and they're already lined. So of course, if you want to, if you're wanting to do Hershey Nugget treats, you know these are kind of good for Hershey Nugget wrappers. If you don't want to use them as envelopes, and three more of that pattern, and lastly this pattern. So. I hope you just think like, wow, like I did when I opened it. Like what awesome crafty goodness. So for this card, all you're gonna do, let's just move, I'm just using my, oops, there's some bling already. Bling fell off of something. What did the bling fall off of? 
I don't know. We'll, we'll use the bling in a minute. So it probably fell off my box. I think it fell off my butterfly. Put some extra bling on there. So it's it's actually a little easier to pick it up with your either paper snips or your um, take your pick tool, this bling. Yeah, I think it came off my butterfly. All right, so for this card, a little note of cheer. I told you this is going to be simple. I mean, I'm not kidding. So what you want to do is you want to take you want to take your glue, your Tombow glue, and you want to put a little line of glue right there. And I, it does, this kit does come with glue dots. And if you know me, I'm not a fan of glue dots. Well, you know, they're okay if you put them on the paper first. I'm just making this a little longer. If you're going to use glue dots, put them on your paper first and then lift off the thing so it's just easier to deal with. I'm going to put that like that, and hopefully I didn't do anything upside down or backwards. There we go. A little note of cheer, and then... I'm going to turn it over so, and then slide it so it's in the center. Let's see if it's in the center. I'll put it on something else to see if it's in the center because I can't really tell. We'll put it on something another color. I mean, yeah, it looks pretty, it looks centered, but it could maybe slide down to the right slightly, but I think it's good. So, of course, you just let that dry a little bit. And then... You put the dimensionals. Now, when I get dimensionals in my kits, I just throw them in with my bag of dimensionals. So who knows if dimensionals, let's see if dimensionals, yes. Mini dimensionals came in this kit, right? So you do get dimensionals. I'm just going to go ahead and not use the mini ones. I'm going to use my big ones. And like I said, I just take my dimensionals out of the kits and throw them into the mix. I throw them into this, like, bag of, like, glue dots and stuff and I just keep on adding to my bag so it probably came with something like these little ones which are fine right and I even use the edges of them so let's just go ahead and be generous we'll put three and then I'll put like a little one I actually put a little piece of one you don't want to, the big dimensionals have a different height okay than the small ones these are taller so I like these because they're taller but also I don't usually like to mix small and big dimensionals together because the, these are taller and they, the small dimensionals are, you get little gaps in your crafting when you do that. Like things are up high and then they go low. All right, so that's it. There's the little notes of cheer. You're gonna go like this and you're gonna plop that on and that's your, did I pull off all four dimensionals? See, so if you had small dimensionals, it would go like that because they're not as tall. And now we add some bling and the bling really does make a difference. I think it makes a difference, and then I did, uh, I did the doily, you know, you can change the direction of the doily is what I mean. You could put like the doily, let's see, you could put the, the blue part over there, the misty moonlight part over there if you want. But I mean, there's really not many ways to change up this card, but I think it looks nice the way it is, this one, because to me, the doily really makes it. It's just such a great element of design. So this is how I take my dimensionals off. You could use your take your pick tool, but I sent it wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. You got to get under there a little bit and loosen up that glue dot and make sure you get the glue dot to go with you, right? And you're going to put these, say that one got the glue dot easy. Just put it, you, you need to do odd numbers. So I just kind of like do, let's, let's just see. It doesn't have to be odd numbers, but I think I did, I did seven there, but I may, I may just do three here for effect here. I'll do three here. I want to make sure I have enough for the butterfly. But definitely add at least three, some kind of odd number. And you got your little notes of cheer. So that's the first project. Simple, simple. Now we're going to do the second project, which is this little rainbow card. And I want to like to say hi to who's here. And what goes on that one? I believe it's this. Goes on that one. So we will see who came to join me today. And I'm going to find that little piece. The little piece I'm talking about is the little overlay that goes on there. So here it is. This is the piece we want. So hi, Millie and Carmen and, and Yvonne said this is a pretty kit. Joyce from Virginia, hello. And she just got a scan and cut. Did you? I hope you checked out my unboxing, Joyce. I think you did. I remember you saying that. that I did an unboxing on my new extra scan and cut 125e extra meaning i already have them 125 and they're like exactly like except for kind of the things that came 
with them. My E came with some, what, what would you call it? Those little activation cards. All right, so hi, Joanne. Hello, and good morning from Australia to Carol M. And hello, Linda. And Jill, hello. She said she just got a scan and cut too, so definitely, if you didn't, if you missed my last video, I showed how to personalize your scan and cut. So go ahead and check out the vinyl tutorial, ladies, and my unboxing. So Jill, good luck with your new scan and cut too. And hello, Doris. And Linda, who's live for the first time. Cool. Well, what I'd like to do, Linda, is I like to just do crafting right away. I like to just get into my crafting and say hello later because A, I'm trying to find a spatula. No, that's not my A. A, I'll find a spatula or a bone folder. So you need a spatula or bone folder to burnish your, you know, your cards when you fold them. All right, so the reason I, I say hello later, hello, listen to me, I'm saying hello because that's what Doris just said to me. Must be German, right? Okay, if I say hello at the beginning of videos, it just like, A, it wastes a lot of time, and B, I never say when I'm going live, so it's not like a lot of people are there at the beginning of my videos because I never really announce my lives because like in this case, my husband, he just like, I'm going to Home Depot. I'm like, oh, thank God. Not that I don't love my husband being here, he, it's just that it's like a bull in a china shop. So I was like, I have some quiet. I can go live. And also I had a lot of house guests. So I had to wait till like they go somewhere to go live. Or even when I'm working, I have to wait till a certain time of day when I have good internet to go live. When I'm, I mean, when I'm not working, I shouldn't say when I'm working. When I'm, not, when I'm home and I'm not working, what I'm doing is cutting off the little nibs. You know. So anyway, I, I never, that's why I don't play in my lives. And then I say hello later. So that, that's kind of like the first reason my lives aren't planned. B, I don't want like to waste a lot of time saying hello instead of just getting right into crafting, right? And C, I can't walk and chew gum. I have to concentrate on my crafting. And then later when I have little breaks, like just now where I'm not doing anything real intense, then I can stop and look at the screen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just, I cut off the little nibs and I'm just going to put this on. So let's look at the picture once more. And it does this. So it, yeah, I'm just seeing if I have this right. And not right, but the way they had it. So they had it like this. See, more like that. I mean, it would go either way. And you got to make sure you take any little pieces out. This was laser cut. So there's still some leftover pieces in there. Now for this one, you definitely want dimensionals because I feel like, oh, wow, you're covering this beautiful this beautiful rainbow. So you definitely want dimensionals back there so you can lift it off the rainbow. I'm going to go ahead and use my big and small, dim I mean, if I, no, I'll just use my big dimensionals. I think they'll all fit. I don't need any small dimensionals. But yours might come with small ones. That's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and use my big ones. Generously, as you see, I love, you, I love dimensionals. I can never have enough. And then what I'm going to do is take the sides of the packages, right, and just sort of put them around to give me some extra lift on the card. Really pop that card up. Hmm. Put some there. Put some more there. So now my card is really going to be fun up in the air. And now I'm just going to pull these off while I'm, while I'm just doing that. And then all I got to do is add a sentiment. Just such a great kit, right? So I have some other things to mention on this video. So yesterday, uh, Sarah Douglas, she's the CEO of Stampin' Up! And she went live on her Facebook group. And she had with her some ladies. And I, I'm sorry I forget both their names, but I do, I do know Sarah's name. And Sarah's a trustworthy person, so I, I'm going to go with her on this one. She, she announced the Heart of Stamping Up! Award. So if Stamping Up! backs up something, I, I can definitely back it up myself because... I don't, I don't tend to like do, I, I mean, I don't tend to like talk about charities a lot or something on this channel, only if Stampin' Up! is backing it up, like my company's backing it up, or I know the charity personally, or something like I'm involved with it personally, like you've seen me talk about Operation Shoebox probably before because I've been a volunteer with them for so many years. But in this case, my, my CEO, Sarah, recommends this charity. Okay, and it is called James Storehouse. I did print out the label. Here we go. You guys can look it up. 
I have to cover my, I gotta cover my return address. I'm gonna cover my return address there. Just go ahead and look that up. James Storehouse, right? James Storehouse. It is a, they're, they're raising money for backpacks for foster children in the Los Angeles County area. And they're, they're having a drive and they're trying to get 600 backpacks. But if they get more, that's, that's even better because there's 35,000 stu uh, students, I guess, or children in the foster care system in that area. So they, they help them out by making, giving them school supplies and backpacks. And I'm putting it up there, even though it's not up there in the sample. In the sample, it covers up the butterfly a bit, but I didn't want to cover up these beautiful butterflies. And I thought there's this big empty space. So I decided just to put it up there. Okay, so anyway, you can, you can go to their website and you can help by donating school supplies, backpacks, or in the case of what I'm gonna do is just little cards. So what you wanna do is, um, let me cover this up again. So you can send little cards there and I'm just getting started. That's why I have a big envelope. So what, if, you're, if you're wondering like what to do with all these kits, let me see if these are the ones. These might be for something else to see if they're, thank you, they're not the same ones. Okay, no. I have other kits. They're called like, this is a former paper pumpkin kit now turned into a, a kit called You Are My Anchor. So anyway, just let me finish this thought and then I'll go back to finishing that card with some bling. I made little cards to, for James Storehouse. I'm just, I'm just getting started, but this could go in with their backpack. So even if you don't donate school supplies, just donate little cards. I decorated this one on both sides. Adventure awaits, write something in there. You don't know who the kids are, right? So just write something, have an adventurous school year, plunge into learning new things, right? We don't know the kids' names and don't write your last name. We don't want personal stuff, right? And they have to see your cards, so don't seal your cards because they have to make sure your cards are okay, right? They have to make sure they're, they're le legit, like you're not putting anything in there, anything personal. Here, have a great school year, enjoy your goodies. I'm just writing little notes of encouragement to whoever gets a backpack. So even if you don't donate backpacks and supplies, donate cards to this charity, if you can. I'm just telling you this is a way to use up your kits. Was that another one? Here's another one. Ahoy. Here. Have a great school year. You got this thinking of you today. I Actually, I could write the same thing on every card because different kids are getting it, but what if the same kids kind of compare notes? I wanted to make the notes slightly different and the cards slightly different in case they end up getting them together. What's your note say? What's your note say? And if you're from another country or or you want to write what state you're from, you can put that on there, like sign your name and what state. So that's just a way to help with these. It's a, it's a way to use up the things that you make, like these kits here, these cards here. I'm probably going to give smaller cards, like from the little smile card kit. And this, you are my anchor kit, because those both have small cards, a little smile and you are my anchor, rather than these kind of cards, because I think these will be cuter to put in backpacks, right? This kind of card. That's what I'm thinking. But I'm saying if you have a lot of cards, like the kind of card we're doing now, go ahead and use them, right? Just giving you a way to use up things. And I also wanted to tell you about this charity because I just saw the Facebook Live last night. I'm just adding some bling and we're done with this project. So if you're from other countries, you can still donate to James Storehouse by, by going and sending cards. Like you don't even need to be in the US to do that, right? You can send cards from anywhere. That doesn't cost too much. I know it's like for us, it's like $1.25 for an international stamp. And you could put a, anything up to an ounce in there. So you could fit a bunch of those little cards. Let's see what I did last time. I just want to see where I put the bling. Okay, I put the bling. Like I like how I did it last time with the extra two bling. I just want to make sure I have enough for my butterfly box. I mean, extra bling meaning I like putting bling like together. So I think I'll do something like that. I'll put like three little blings together in this area just to really make it stand out. Okay, so there you go. So that's that really cool kit. Awesome. And then now we're gonna do this fun box. You make life brighter. I'll explain how I got the box inspired, how I, how I was inspired to make this box. So first thing you need to do is just get your butterfly cards and cut them, in, cut them apart. Being careful to get the top, you know, just to get them like slice it here and then you can kind of, let me hear, let me, let me concentrate while I slice it, slice it. And then you kind of, you're going to do this to kind of curve the edge so it's not so harsh. I need, I'm right handed, so I'm going to do it like that. So that'll be the bottom of the box. Okay. And then this is the top of the box. And I'm just, see how that little, that part, I'm just going to do that little, I'm just going to do this. I hope you're doing this along with me too. You'll have fun making a box along with me. 
if you're if you have this kit already if you don't have this kit just make a box this size because the box I'm making will work independently as a box even without your lid and if you really wanted to make a really strong lid you could just put two cards together and two bottom pieces all right so what how did I get inspired to make this kind of little box well I've been making boxes forever as many of you know but this little box I was just working with these tombstone boxes which is a recent video on my YouTube channel actually my niece and nephew starred in this video they they wanted to share the projects they made okay so here's here's our new Stampin Up tombstone boxes by Stampin Up these are like in the holiday catalog so the tombstone box has the shape on the back and the front and at first I was like what a waste why would you use tombstones on the back and the front right and I say things out loud when I'm unboxing you may have noticed before like even now I'm like why do you use white cards like, you know, I just say things that are on my mind because I just don't hold back. But then I thought, oh, wow, it's really cool, and it's really easy to open. And it really looks elegant having it on both sides, right? And this fits the little pretty pillow box dies inside. This, this box fits the pretty pillow box die. Okay? So anyway, that's kind of inspired me. So I was like, oh, well, why not put a butterfly on the front and back of the box? Okay? So why not do the same thing with this kind of box? Now the only difference is, now this one doesn't have it. It doesn't have a place for your fingers. And there, it, but this is pretty strong, but it's still kind of hard to get off. And it would be kind of good to have a little finger hole. So if you guys have a little half inch circle punch, right? You can, if you have a half inch circle punch, it would help you. And I think I need to make the box not so tight. I had to pinch these a little bit like this to get, I didn't put anything in it yet, by the way. It would fit Ghirardelli's. See, I had to pinch it so this will goes on and off easier. But if you want, you could take a circle punch and punch the side, and it would help you give that thumb hole. And someone, one of my viewers said that last time when they saw me struggling with the box. They're like, uh, why don't you make a thumb hole? And I'm like, oh my gosh, duh. You know? So what we're going to do is take this white card, because it's plain, and we're going to use that to make our box. But what I did use before was pale papaya cardstock, right? So you can use pale papaya cardstock too. Oops, I didn't need to cut it, not score it. I'm using a scoreboard, but some of your paper cutters have a score, a way to score right on them. What I need is my paper trimmer, and then I'm going to score it. All right, so because I had all the James Sturhouse stuff out, now I'm looking for the place with my measurements. Okay, so here we want... All right, here's my measurements. Sorry, it's just a piece of scrap paper. So um, what you have is... When I, when I did this, I was like, well, how much room do I have? And I have, I have room to make a box that's 3 inch by 2.25 inch. That's what I had room to make on this butterfly. So I needed to make the paper 5. I need to cut the paper 5 by 4.25. Right? 5 by 4.25. Well, this card is not quite, right? It's not quite 4. It's, it is, it is 4.25. Yeah, that's right. That'll work. It'll just work. 4.25. So 5 by 4.25 to be able to fit the but it needs to be a little bit slightly smaller you'll see what i mean because i need to get rid of that score line so here we go so we're going to make it as close to five by 4.25 as you can and what's important is and this one is already a little bit bigger so it's like say it's say this one is five and a half say right i need this one to be five so really the one side we're just cutting off we're just taking the white card and we're cutting it off at 4.25 and the other one we're cutting off at five see Oops, did I say five? It was five and a half, yeah. Yeah, it was five and a half, and now I made it five. So this is what you have. You have a piece of five by 4.25, right? This is just my little scrap paper. I didn't have time to write this in the note yet. So now we need to take the other side. This is, the, this is gonna be the bottom of the box. We need to do the same thing, but it needs to be a smidgen smaller. A smidgen meaning, so instead of 4.25, right? That's 4.25. Instead of cutting right on the line, we need to make it slightly smaller than 4.25. And a smidgen, by definition, is like, like a sixteenth of an inch or something, right, if you're going by your paper trimmer. So a sixteenth of an inch smaller, like a smidgen. That's a little bit bigger than a smidgen because we'll get to that in a minute. So if this one's going to be five, but it's not really going to be five. It's going to be a smidgen smaller than five because it's the bottom of the box. So when you make a bottom of your box, I'll show you what I mean when I put these two together. So here's the top of my box and the bottom of my box. Your bottom of your box has to be a smidgen smaller. 
Can you see the smidgen? That's a smidgen, a sixteenth of an inch. And a smidgen smaller on the side. And I'm going to go with a little bit smidgen smaller than that because I don't want this box to be so hard to open like my Papa Paya box was. So I'm just going in with a little bit, a little bit in there. Making this a little bit smaller. So then you can really see what a smidgen is. So the sides of your box and the top, the bottom, when you make the bottom, it needs to just have... So they're, they're the same, but the bottom of the box is going to be a smidgen smaller on all sides. Not all sides, on two of the sides. Okay, so there we go. So now we're going to do, now we're, the rest of it, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to score. Now I'm using this, but you could use your, you could use your trimmer to score. What I'm doing is I'm scoring. This is a one inch around all the sides, right? One inch around. That's what I'm scoring. So to do this, very simple, we're going to score one inch. We're just, it's just easier than doing math. It's easier to just turn this and simply score at one inch on all sides. Otherwise, you got to do math and then, you know, go backwards and it's never the same on the right side as it is on the left and it would get wonky. So I think this is the easiest way and I'm scoring one inch along the way. It doesn't matter which is the top and which is the bottom. We're going to find out which one fits into the other later on. So this one's a little slightly bigger. I mean, the, the process is the same. So now, you know, when you, the process is the same for making boxes either way. I'll let you stare at the box we're making in case you just came on. That's what we're make, making. So what you want to do now is burnish the edges. You want to, do you see how I, I scored down? Now I flipped the paper up. So that was called a valley. And But you want to fold along the mountain. So you're scoring in and making a valley. But then you're folding along and making a mountain. That's why I, if you see me flip up side down with things, that's what I'm doing. And I sometimes do things without saying what I'm doing, so I just want to make sure I said what I was doing there. So, so you know which side to score on. When you use our Stampin' Up! cardstock, like any, any of the coordinating colors, that will look cute too. But don't use designer series paper. Now you have your box and you're, you see the letter H. It's kind of like the letter H. I'm just going to cut little, I'm just going to cut little triangles. And what's, I'm going to cut little triangles and do what's called mitering the edges. So this is just your regular box, box making technique. Okay. It's what I do when I make my boxes. I'm cutting right there. What I'm doing is I'm not messing with this side. This side is still the same length. I'm messing with these little flaps on the corners. I'm mitering both the edges. Mitering the edges just means you're cutting triangles out of both edges by cutting little pieces off. It's just easier because I'm right-handed to do it while well, it's on that side. And just what you end up with is just little triangles out of both sides of each flap. That's what you end up with. And so you just do that. And it doesn't matter how big the triangles are. I mean, as long as this is still the right size. These are your sides of the box. This, these four things are the sides of your box. So it doesn't really matter how big these, as long as your flaps close, right? And you, you know how to do this in Canvas Workspace if you took my box making course. We did this, we made boxes electronically with software. But I still love to make boxes manually. It's so, it's so like therapeutic and relaxing. So now what you need is for this little step, I think I brought some along. You, it's good to have little clothespins for this next step. I do have clothespins. I just find that easier. So you're going you're gonna to glue these flaps. Oh, let me show you what mitering the edges looks like first. Okay. Let me find the card that's a rainbow and just show you what that looks like. And then we'll do the next one as I'm talking. I mean, as I'm gluing and talking. See, this is what your box looks like when you're done. See, and maybe I didn't miter that edge. So you should have a little bit in. I may have forgot this one. Or if, if I did, it, sh it should at least notice it. It's not much, but you should at least notice it. And if you don't do that, like, if you don't do that, let me, before I put glue on it, what will happen is, if you don't miter the edges, then you fold in the sides and you glue them, and then this part sticks out a little, and it's really annoying. And then you're trying to get in there with scissors and trying to cut it out, and you're like, darn, I wish I would have mitered the edges. All right, so you need clothespins to help you, like, while it's drying. And I'm just going to take some multi-purpose glue. Be generous there. You could use rolling adhesive. Right? 
and you're just going to hold it there for a couple of seconds and you're going to put your clothespin there or your clamps. A good place to get clamps is Harbor Freight. They sell these really cute mini clamps. They're super cute. Someone asked when I told you guys that last time, they were like, oh, the Dollar Tree has those cute little mini clamps too. Okay, and let that dry and then do the side. Oops, I was ready to take the cap off, see? But I, my cap was already off. Probably shouldn't leave your cap off, but this one, does, this one's running low. But what I actually did is I refilled it. I refilled my glue and it actually worked. I thought it was going to get all clogged up, but I did it. Because I like that fine tip. So now you're going to take your clothespins and move them down. You know, to let that side set. And you want to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle while it's... Make sure... Wiggle it a little bit while it's wet to make sure your box is right. Now we're going to go ahead and do the other one. And I can do that one faster. Oh, I've already scored it. We'll just burnish it. Burnish it. Okay, so I'm just saying hi to everyone else who came in. Hi, Diana and Linda. What doily dye? No, no, Linda. Linda's saying, I'm sorry, but what about this doily? Oh, I did not use a dye. Girlfriend, you know how much poking that would be? Pokey, pokey. And wax paper trick, parchment paper, dye brush, poking, adhesive sheets. Oh, my goodness. I would, I would not bother with this kind of dye. I mean, I would bother. We do have dyes like this, but I did not use a dye. This comes in the kit. These beautiful doilies come in this kit. Three doilies. I would never attempt to do something like that with my scan and cut. I don't like working with lace and those tiny little dyes that I got to poke all day. Oh my goodness. No, I'm glad I didn't have to die cut that. I like die cutting shapes. Like lately I've been playing with these world eyes we have. I like cutting like shapes and making interactive cards, but I don't know about doilies and lace. We have this one called like ornate frames or something. And it drove me crazy because there were so many pokies, but it's gorgeous. Maybe we still have it, but it was so intricate that I ended up, but my sister like taught me this wax paper trick when you do have such intricate dyes. But anyway, that's not a dye. That is part of the kit. And now I lost my track of who I was saying hello to because now I got back into crafting. See, what happens is, and YouTube is uh, comments, they appear and then they disappear. And then you have to kind of find them again. They like flash up on the screen. Why? Because they don't want us. They don't want the YouTuber to like get like the whole screen covered in comments. You can't. You can't see them. All right. So Linda. So anyway. So that was Linda. Hello, Linda. And I hope I answered your question. And then Debbie is saying Debbie J is saying she got this kit or two of these kits. Oh no, she got two of these kit. This kit and two other kits in her order. Yeah, I'm up to my fourth kit now. I got four kits of these of these kits. And then we had a kit night with my team, and the, you know, so we, um, well, you know that, right? So anyway, that's when you can share, so you can trade something you made with a kit with something someone else made so that you can collect samples from all the kits if you don't want to get all the kits yourself. It's kind of a one-on-one -on -one swapping, it's called. But yeah. Those butterflies feel like, yeah, they could be mylar stencils. You could turn them into stencils. They would be nice stencils. I just have so many, I, I do so much with the butterfly wings, brilliant wings dies that I think I have such cool things with those. Yeah, they could be good mylar stencils. And mylar stencils, if you're not familiar, we make mylar stencils with the scan and cut by using like these adhesive mylar sheets. And then you can, then you can get your blending brushes, right? And you can blend. It's really cool. Sponge color and blend over them with the mylar. I mean, super awesome. See, this gets faster and it's just fun. And plus, I just thought this is a better use of this box than just a butterfly card. Now, you could do something similar with your scan and cut. And I'm thinking in my next course, I just wanted to make sort of like a some kind of Christmas tree box or something similar, turkey box, something similar where we have the same shape on both sides, but we use the machine to do it. The same concept where you create the shape twice.
duplicate the shape, mirror the shape. You don't even have to mirror the shape if it's the exact same shape and put it on the top and bottom of the box. Kind of like I did with, I did it in one of my courses on boxes and envelopes with the coffee cup die. I mean, a coffee cup we designed, but that box was open. It stood up. It was like a coffee cup and it opened and then you could put coffee in it. But this, I'm thinking more like this kind of box that closes because when you close a box, you can put more in it and, and it's safe for shipping and stuff. Now, before this gets too dry, I just move that over there. What I sometimes like to do is try to put the one into the other before the one before the glue dries and hardens, and then you can't move the box at all, right? So let's see, was that the top? I think that was the top. We're gonna find out. Yeah, that was the top. So it's better to try to see. I now you have to pinch the edges a little, even though I did that smidgen. Still pinch the edges of your bottom one a little bit to get it to slide in there easy. There we go. And now the top, because the top is bigger and because it's not dry yet totally, it'll, it'll stretch better than waiting for it to dry because I put the bottom on it. Okay? And now you see how that's the perfect size for that butterfly? And now you're just going to line up your butterflies. Still using glue. I use glue for this part. So make sure that that's the bottom. So you can put glue. Put the glue on the bottom first. Always do the bottom first. Oops. And if you if you do foams, I think foamy adhesive, I think they're gonna come off. That's why I'm saying, oops, that's not my card I cut. Where's the card I cut? If you do foam, I think it would come off, so let's do. So let's make sure that's the mirror image of that one. Put that on the bottom. Lay this down. Right? I'm turning it over. Get the glue. See that? I'm laying it down to center it. See what I'm doing? Put it right under the camera. Right? You want to hide it so the box isn't showing. That's why I gave you the dimensions that I play with. This, this hides it under there. Okay? And then we will now put glue on the top. And then you're going to, when you put the glue on the top, you're going to kind of look right over it. I'm going to hover over the top of it and I'm going to make sure that it's exactly where the other one is. Actually, here, put glue, make sure you put glue off to the sides because you don't want this... You don't want this coming off. And if you have that half inch, quarter inch circle punch, you could use a half inch. I probably wouldn't use an inch. I'd probably use a half inch. Oh, and I see a nib. You know what I'm talking about with the little nibs. See? Hold on. We're almost done. We're going to decorate it. These are like little nibs that annoy me. I'm going to cut them out of the... I don't know. Call me a perfectionist because I'm not usually a perfectionist. But some things like... I want them to look like I used a die cut. Not that it came from a machine, so that's why I cut these little nibs off. Because we could have used a die cut. Because what you're learning can be applied in other areas of your crafting. But why reinvent the wheel when you have this beautiful colored butterfly already? All right, so now I'm going to cut. Now I'm going to decorate the front. So you want to make sure that you can stand it up, though. You know, maybe do a little tap, 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 right? To make sure that see how stand it up to make. Sure, this, this side. See, this side's not touching the bottom. There we go. Now, the reason I did that, you always got to make sure you stand it up, is now that now you know that they're exactly even, now that your box will stamp up, stand up because it was like that. It was a little bit wonky, and it wasn't standing up because this side was higher than the other. So that's the way to test that your box is good. Now we're going to take that little sentiment from before. You make life brighter, and you're just going to chop it up. You make life brighter. You could have just put it right across the box, I suppose. But I just thought it looked cuter this way because I really don't like to block the middle of the butterfly. Now, I would have capitalized the U, being, the, being grammatically correct, but hey, that's, that's all good. And I did raise these up with dimensionals. And we put the bling in the middle, something like that. I guess it's the style to use lowercase. I'm just using the edges of my dimensionals. Let's look at the other one as an example to see where I put them. You know, just to kind of, I like to get my projects done. I know you get the idea by now, but I'm just trying, I just like to get my projects all done. Because what happens is I get, I'm like a little, it's like, what is it? When the dog sees the squirrel, squirrel! 
I get new crafts, like something will come in the mail or I just get, or I open up the next kit and then this kit gets put, put back, put off to the side. And then I'm like, oops, got distracted. I'm just kind of starting out from the middle and I'm going to put like the life next to the middle and then you up there. I want to, I want to make sure I leave the butterfly free because I want the butterfly to have some freedom to have that bling in the middle. Oops, there's a little bit of extra. You should probably cut your dimensionals the right size before you put them on. But see, I use every bit of my dimensionals and we do have what's called foam adhesive strips, which I use for some of my interactive cards. But for these, these those are more for the, my whirly cards, my foam, my foam strips. Because I just rather use the ends of these the ends of my dimensionals. Yep, I made that one too big too. So it's that's all good. It's all good. See, now my project will be done and I have two boxes made. I think I'm going to make the third one as well. I think I like that better than the card. So now you're going to get your bling. And I did a small, big, big, big. I guess I just did one small. I can just do... I guess we have, we might have three sizes here. No, that just looks like small and large. I'm going to do a couple small though. And then a big one. Oops, it got, move over. I'm going to put the big ones in the middle. I might go, I might go big and then small at the end again. All right, sometimes you can't fight with it. You just got to grab another one. I have what's called a take your pick tool, but I, I prefer using my scissors for some reason. Your take your pick tool will work too. See, it's right here. You can do this. Oops. Oh no, it's not right there. Never mind. I thought it was right there. Okay, we'll go back to using this. I have one bling that's a little wonky, and that's it. But the rest of them, the rest of them look centered. So like that one there. So I hope you made one too. And if you want to count this, if you're in my VIP group on Facebook and you want to count this toward your Butterfly Brilliance Bootcamp Challenge this month, you can do this one instead. If you don't have the other set, you can always make this butterfly project. Basically, the challenge is all about butterflies. All right. It's just kind of wonky. I had to put it over there. So there you go. So that's how to make it. The alternative project. All right. Thanks for answering my question. I need to go back and look in the main catalog. Okay, that was Linda. Cute idea for the card kit. So, oh yeah, so by the way, so Diana is saying, Diana B is saying, cute idea for that card kit. So I wanted to mention that you don't have to do anything extra to these kits. They're, they're not even meant, they're kind of like meant for beginners and not even meant to like do anything different with because they're so awesome the way that they are. You don't need to have alternative projects. It's just that sometimes I look at a card like that and it just says, Make me into a box. Yeah. Hi, Terry P. Hi, Connie from Kansas. Yeah. Hi, Deborah L. from Utah. And she hasn't played with her kit yet, so I'm glad you're using this to play with your kit. And, okay, Laura is asking, can I do a video on cutting out the penguin paper? And what she's talking about is this paper. And, yes, I, I totally plan on doing that. I've actually been make, using this paper to do some whirl, give it a whirl dies. I was playing with those. So now I need to put some penguins on those cards. I actually was making the cards and I need to put some critters on the cards. So what you're saying is, yes, can I cut this out? So yes, I definitely want to cut out the critters with my scan and cut. So I'll try to do that maybe next or very soon. So yes, I can do the penguin, the penguins. Yes, Laura. So no problem with that. All right. To sum up, this is the notes of cheer card kit and these are the things you make with it. And I just wanted to just show you real quick. Okay, we, this is what we just made. This is what you can make with this kit. I just want to give you a little sneak, real, sneak peek, peek real quick of other kits and what you can make with them because my, and I was kind of forced because my team had a, cra a kit night where we crafted online together and I was forced to open some of my kits too. So I can just give you a little sneak peek. It took me like an hour to make like three cards because I was chatting so much. 
But here's something called the, and I'll go through this too, see what we make from this, but it's called the You Are the Best. No, it's called, I'm sorry. It's called Let's Party Treat Packaging Kit. And you make these cute little pillow boxes. There's chocolate in there. Okay, so that's adorable. Let's Party Treat Packaging. Okay, there is this kit called a Little Smile Card Kit. And there's lots of beautiful cards with it and a little pouch to put your cards in so you can give random acts of kindness. Little smile. Looks like that. This is the one I made. These are, this one has a stamp set with it. But the stamping block was Coastal Cabana, just so you know. But I used my own ink. What ink did I use? Granny Apple Green? Let's see. Nope, Old Olive. I should have known that. That's Old Olive ink. I used my own Old Olive ink because it's, it does come with the Coastal Cabana stamping spot. So that's that kit. And the only other kit I have is this kit, but this kit is mixed in with my paper pumpkin. So just so you know, this, this was my old paper pumpkin. So it used to be, the paper pumpkin has come back and it used to be like an Iden indigo color. And now the new kit is a Pacific point color. And it came, you are, this is called You Are My Anchor. So like they do look like this, but the ones I'd made, the ones I made are way down there. I made them in different color schemes. Oh, they come with stamping blocks and all this really cool stuff. So those are some sneak peeks. I don't know where all the cards are I made, but I did a video on this one and I did make some things with it. So definitely check out our kits collection by Stampin' Up. And I hope you enjoyed these projects and alternative projects that you can make with the Notes of Cheer. And I'll be back to show you more things to do with these kits in future videos. Thank you for watching. This is The Papered Chef.